you have hundreds, if not thousands, of these trucks driving north and south on these roads every day, bringing supplies to other military bases. Most of the people who were driving for Kellogg Brown and Root were foreign workers. They were from Pakistan and uh, Nepal, India. Sometimes there would be Americans driving the trucks, U.S. civilians. I heard about the job through uh, another truck driver friend in Calexico, California. We were sitting there waiting for a load and he told me this was his last load and he was going overseas. From there, you know, I sent my resume in. I thought I was really going to be doing a lot of reconstruction in Iraq uh, as far as, um, well, I could see me hauling fuel maybe to a, a, a place that had loaders and dozers, you know. We never went to go be in a battle or fight a fight. We went to take care of our families and make some money to reconstruct Iraq. Tony and I met in 79 at a Halloween party. It was kind of a blind meeting and uh, we're married less than a year later. His brother was in the Navy and so he always wished that he had done something like that, that he's just a good old boy. He thought it was such a great cause to go and help rebuild and got a job with Halliburton and he was going to go drive a truck in Iraq. Within a month he was there. I was uh, 15 when I met Steve, first time. And a good friend of ours introduced us at a fair they had and uh, we set it off. He got out of the fiberglass business in Michigan and eventually ended up truck driving. Steve decided to go over there to get us financially set for not only retirement, but to you know help three kids go through college. He would take on anything if he thought that it would benefit his family. He wasn't military, he was non-combatant, he was a driver. He went over there to help rebuild Iraq. And that's what he wanted to do. When I woke up early that morning, it was about, I'd say about 4.30 a.m. We had to be out by our trucks at, by 7 a.m. And we already knew what we were going on, on our mission. We were told at 7 p.m. the night before on the 8th of April. The first things we do was very normal, it was just routine behavior, just go ahead and do a pre-check, go ahead and uh, prevent a maintenance and check your oil and check your tire, air in your tires and your fuel tank. And the soldier that was sketching a map with his boot in the gravel next to his vehicle, well, it, some of us saw part of it and some of us didn't. Well, they never, nobody ever told us why, nobody told us what was going on and, um, <clears throat> They said the roads are red, and I wasn't sure what red meant. We left the post uh, nearing 11 o'clock, 10.40, 11 o'clock in the morning in there somewhere, and headed on our way to Baghdad. We're going down the road, and, and we got pretty close to the, I believe, the Abu Ghraib prison. And all of a sudden, the traffic, there's no traffic. And uh, right about then, <clears throat> I mean, bullets came from everywhere. It sounded like we were in a hailstorm. It was like when you were a, a kid, we used to make popcorn in a pressure cooker. The temperature comes up and the, begins to pop. They were coming in through my doors. They were hitting my tanker. They were, they were hitting my windshield. They were coming in through the, hitting the engine. You could hear them come in through one door, hit the other door where they lodged in, and I mean, they're just coming in everywhere. And then it just, it reached a crescendo and just seemed like it never stopped after that. And then I could hear the men uh, crying on the radio, yelling out for help. I'm burning, I'm burning, help me, help me. Please don't let me die in Iraq. 
truck behind me that his trailer caught fire and he overturned and was trapped inside the truck and burned up. I heard one yelling and then screaming and, and until he, he stopped. Friends that I'd promised before that, you know, if they broke down or something happened, I wouldn't leave them. I hear them screaming, I'm hit, I'm hit. Help me, help me, please. I don't want to die here. I was completely saturated with blood, you know, and my pants were soaked with blood, my shirt was soaked with blood. It was just absolutely just sheer terror. Just absolutely, positively horrifying. And I still feel, I still have that shaky sort of thing in me. It's like sitting here right now, it's like I'm, I'm still there. The mutilated bodies of four people were found west of Baghdad, near an area where a U.S. fuel convoy was attacked on Friday. After that attack, seven Americans were reported missing, including uh, contractors working for Halliburton, a company that supplies uh, fuel uh, and other supplies to U.S. troops. The families were notified today of the discovery. Halliburton did release a statement saying, quote, We at Halliburton are saddened to learn of these deaths and are working with authorities so the families can begin the grieving and healing process. Two U.S. soldiers are missing and also Thomas Hamill uh, from Macon, Mississippi, an American contractor from Halliburton. Saturday, April 10th, one day after I got the first phone call from Halliburton and KBR, Steve, when you get back to base, please call me. I got a call yesterday saying that you are missing after heavy fighting and more attacks. You and nine others. To sharpen. And mm -hmm. what are these rocks called again? I forgot. Dad told us, but I don't remember. Like shale? I'm not sure. I just turned 50 and it's hard to have to, you know, reinvent yourself like you're a teenager again. Oh no, your dreams go, things go out the tube. So, he was definitely below my life. He, he firmly believed that, that KBR and Halliburton were going to keep him safe. I mean, he, he truly did. He was very positive about that um, right up to the end. He believed he would be safe. He wasn't much of a writer, that's for sure. His journal's empty. <laughs> My dad had just told me he was going to work for Halliburton, how big they were and how they were there to help rebuild. Somebody knew that they sent these wonderful men out there. How can they do that? These men went to do the right thing. So, bottom line, they were totally taken advantage of.